When I went to medical school, we thought of the brain as this incredibly complex, amazingly cool organ that got shaped by childhood and then started decaying with aging. And almost everything I just said, we now know to be wrong. We're trying to understand the brain with the brain. I'm Alvaro Pascual Leone. I'm a professor of neurology at Harvard Medical School, and I'm a cognitive neurologist. So I take care of patients who have problems somewhere in between neurological disease and psychiatric disease. I grew up in Spain and my parents were both physicians and I've always been curious as to why we are the way we are as human beings. I thought that I would study mathematics and philosophy and my parents thought it was a wonderful idea that I had great innovation and aspirations and so they thought that I may be better off going through medicine. And so I went to medical school and found myself actually absolutely loving the contact with patients and the opportunity to do research that teaches new things and can be translated into helping patients. In neurology and neuroscience, there is a dogma that the brain, when you get old, is no longer able to learn new stuff. There is not a single grandfather or grandmother in the universe that doesn't learn new things from their grandchildren. People learn new jobs, new sports, new abilities. The brain continues to change throughout our lifespan. And in fact, new cells can be made and potentially get incorporated into connections. Williams James said, you know, humans, we get used to doing things a certain way. He called it habits, but we can modify that. It doesn't change all at once, but it changes progressively. That is plasticity. What allows you to do any one thing is a coordinated activity between multiple areas working together in what we call networks and that those networks are in fact fundamentally changing. It changes with every thought, every experience, everything we do. If you're slow in movement because of one illness or another, because you're depressed or because you have Parkinson's disease, the slowness of your movement is caused by a dysfunction of the same network. And so therefore, the key thing is really to guide the plasticity, to guide the plasticity for the benefit of each individual. TMS stands for transcranial magnetic stimulation. It is a way of inducing current in the brain in a specific controlled part of the brain without having to open up the skin and the skull. And it turns out that when you apply repetitive stimuli, then you're activating a circuit over and over in a controlled pattern, and that changes that circuit. And so that allows us to activate, probe, disrupt, or suppress activity in different parts of the brain depending on where we target and what parameters of stimulation we apply. With neurological and psychiatric diseases, the symptoms that the patients present are ultimately consequences or manifestations of plasticity. If you understand the connections that exist, it's the equivalent of understanding what roads are available leaving out of your city. Doesn't mean that you now know where you're going to drive, but it tells you which potential possibilities, options you would have. And so you can couple repetitive stimulation with behavioral therapy or with physical therapy or with occupational therapy or with cognitive training and therefore modify and enhance the benefit derived from those therapies. 
I have no idea where uh, new tools will develop. That's the amazing thing, right? In fact, I hope that one of you uh, watching this and, and, and getting into the field will discover tools that we never even freaking imagined. The brain is incredibly cool.